We're seeing some unprecedented challenges in a lot of ways to the norms and the institutions in the, of the post-World War II era. Uh, there's been a rise of uh, xenophobia, of nativism, uh, attacks on immigration, attacks on uh, the NATO and the UN and the alliances and institutions that we built after World War II from lots of different uh, sources all around the world. What do you think accounts for that kind of change in the uh, cultural moment or the intellectual moment we're in? And can you give us some hope about a path uh, out of it? Well, I, th I think your uh, quick summary of some of the challenges we face uh, only needs to be edited and added to because we're also facing internal challenges here to our institutions. And so I think you have to look at both the domestic and the international uh, scene and try to answer that question the best we can. Uh, there's a lot of really smart people on this campus who are thinking about and writing about it, but I would just offer uh, a few observations. You know, we did create the post-World uh, War II order and it served the United States very well and it served the world very well. We had sustained peace and prosperity. We saw the rise of uh, democratic governments. We had a real alliance across the Atlantic with our uh, friends uh, in Europe. We worked hard to make sure that uh, we never saw the horrors of the uh, previous uh, world wars. And I think that we owe a debt of gratitude to the leaders, both in our own country and abroad, who created uh, this uh, time in history. I think things have changed, there's no doubt about that, and a lot of institutions are under stress, uh, including the ones that you mentioned, uh, Mike. And we have to ask ourselves, okay, why did this happen? I think some of it is because the natural movement of thought and understanding about what's needed, the rise of technology and the sharing of information um, across uh, the world, uh, the competition that comes from people who uh, are putting forth a different point of view. There, there's a natural um, rhythm to this that I think we are uh, watching unfold. Mm. But I would add there's also a concerted effort to undermine our faith in these international institutions. Uh, there is a, uh, a, a real uh, effort by some uh, to try to create dislocation and disruption. Uh, and at the top of that list, I would put Vladimir Putin, who has been trying to undermine NATO and the European Union, American democracy, our elections, for his own purposes, in pursuit of his geopolitical strategic goals of restoring, uh, you know, in his view, Russian greatness. You see China offering a competing uh, financial system, and that competing financial system is grounded in authoritarianism, in state-run enterprises, uh, but it's being quite successful, and so people are saying, well, democracy's messy, the free market has all kinds of problems, and so maybe there's something to be learned from what's happening uh, in China. You have rogue nations uh, that are you know, trying to create uh, chaotic conditions for their own uh, purposes. And so you can look around the world and you can see why it is in the interests of some leaders, particularly autocrats, uh, to sow discontent confusion, disappointment uh, with those institutions. What we should be doing is saying, you know what, we need to take a hard look at what has served us well uh, since uh, the post-World War II era, where they need to be reformed, where they need to be updated. Uh, let's engage in that process. But I think we find ourselves in uh, a much more defensive crouch than we should be. We should be standing up for the success of the last 75 years, not throwing it onto trash heap of history. So 
unfortunately, we don't have leaders right now that are willing to do that, but that is what not only the United States needs, but I would argue um, the democratic experiment, the transatlantic alliance, the hope uh, for greater freedom and opportunity around the world. Um, so yes, we, we need to engage now in a, a new process of trying to restore and renew, and where necessary, reform and even replace uh, institutions that are no longer serving us well.